All right, I am here with Deb Cohen, and we are going to talk about how to help your clients buy an old house. Hey, Deb, how are you? I'm good, Jen. How are you? Good. Well, thanks for being on. I appreciate it. Thanks um, for having me. So you're with Coldwell Banker in Connecticut and Massachusetts, but you yeah. also specialize in older homes. Can you give us a little bit of context about, about that? Sure. Um, you know, I'm just really passionate about older homes, older architecture, and I share about that quite a bit on my social media. I also live in a home that was built in 1800. And so I've had a number of clients who have, you know, specifically reached out to me to help them in the buying process because of my knowledge about older homes. You know, having said that, I'm not a home inspector, but I think that I have a comfort level with older homes, maybe that other agents don't have. Right. And I actually found you because of your Instagram feed, which has a lot of like really cool doors. So I want to tell people about that so they can follow you too. Um, sure. But I'm sure awesome. a lot of those are like older homes, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We have so much gorgeous historic architecture in New England. Yeah. And, um, you know, I just love capturing it. And it's also a good excuse for me to travel around the state and check out different areas, find a good coffee shop, take a photo of a house. You we know, should come to Cincinnati afternoon. because we have a lot of old history here too. And a lot of our buildings downtown were built in like the 1800s as well. So I'm sure I would love it. Any place new that I go, I'm always excited to, you know, walk around the area. That's the best way to see a place, in my opinion, is to get out and walk. Definitely. Okay. So as a real estate agent, let's say I have a client that wants to buy an older house and mm -hmm. I'm not like quite sure what are some of the, what are some of the things that like I should counsel them? Cause maybe they're not quite sure. Or what are some right. of the things that I definitely need to look out for in order to help them the best? I mean, I think one thing to be honest is, I mean, you're always going to pre-qualify your buyers, obviously, in terms of their ability to get financing, mm -hmm. um, in terms of, you know, what, what they have available for a down payment and so on. Right. But I think that especially with younger buyers or maybe first time home buyers who are interested in buying an older house, part of the conversation really needs to be about do you understand the reality of living in an older home and what it takes to keep it up and maintain, keep it up mm -hmm. because you can have a home inspection and the home inspection may uncover certain things, but mm -hmm. guarantee there's going to be surprises. And, and, and usually like I found in my experience, when one thing breaks, it's usually four or five or 10 things. It's right. not just like the right. one thing and you're done. Right, exactly. Yeah. So I just like to set the expectation that, you know, it's a, it's almost like a living and breathing thing and you have to invest your time and your money into it and feel comfortable with that. And if you're going to feel really house poor, right, it, you're not going to enjoy it. And right. uh, so, it may, yeah, yeah, I mean, I like that having like the initial conversation ahead of time, like this, the home maintenance is going to be exponentially more than if you buy like a newer home. Right. 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 How and else? Like, let's, I'll oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, you go. If they, so they're like, yeah, yeah, we love it. We want the character. I mean, they always say that, right? Like we want the character of the house and you're like, okay, right. but like, <laughs> I don't think you're getting it. But anyway, so they say that and they're like, we're ready. We have a big nest egg. Like we, we can do the repairs. What are some of like, what else should we be looking for or helping them with or giving them kind of a reality check on? Yeah. I think one of the major things that I like to look out for is kind of the, the not fun stuff when you go mm -hmm. into an older house and that's mm -hmm. really the structure the structural yeah. integrity of the house. Mm -hmm. So obviously going through the basement is, you know, many older homes are built on field stone and brick foundations with mortar, you know, in between and things don't always look so good down there. Yeah. But it's been um, standing for hundreds of years. Well, and that's the thing, you know, on the one hand, it's not going to fall down tomorrow because it has been here for a hundred years, but on right. the other hand, you know, maybe the current owners have deferred maintenance haven't right. really maintained it where they needed it to be. So. And now you need to kind of shore it up and then keep an eye on it going forward. That's true. 
Yeah. Do you and always recommend, or are there certain inspections that you always recommend on an older home versus uh, maybe a newer one? Like, are you always recommending a foundation or plumbing? Or it really depends on the house. Like um, I just helped clients buy a home built in the early 1900s and mm -hmm. I had zero concerns looking at the home. It had clearly been very well maintained mm -hmm. by the current homeowner. You know, all kinds of upgrades had been made to sort of modernize things. And we didn't get a structural engineer, for example, to come out. Okay. Um, and I'm working on a, a contract right now where we, I told them right up front, I said, listen, in addition to a, a home inspector, I would like you to get a structural engineer out here to look things over. And I think you're going to also want to get some estimates because there's some very obvious repair work that I see that needs to be done. And yeah. Be more that I don't even know about. Are there inspectors to that specialize in these types of homes or you think anybody can, you, do you think it requires a specialist? I do. I do. Yeah. I think it's important if you're going to hire a structural engineer that you hire somebody who has expertise with older homes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was so happy this past week when, cause you know, I'm not in charge of hiring the person. I can right. make a recommendation, right. but I was so happy when he pulled up and he had gray hair and <laughs> he'd been doing this for like however many years. And I'm like, Oh, this guy is going to know what he's talking about. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, we had, we actually then had a Mason come in to give us some estimates and the Mason that I wanted that I knew had experience with older homes wasn't available. So my clients found someone else mm -hmm. and they showed up to give an estimate. And it was just clear that they had no experience with this type of home or this type of foundation right. and the advice they were giving. I was like, this just doesn't sound right. You right. Know? So that's the thing too, is you, I mean, certain contractors, yeah, like a plumber's a plumber and you're going to be able to get them to come in and, and fix things up. Sometimes they may need to order parts that aren't as commonly available, mm -hmm. but um, for, for, for the structural stuff, you really want to try to find someone with that expertise. Yeah, but you're right. I mean, older homes, you have to worry about repairs and, and you're bringing up a good point too. Like the windows may not be a normal size. The doors are not a normal size. Like nothing is level. Like Right. All of these things that people don't really think about, but they like, you know, they like the really high ceilings. Well, yeah, but that does have an effect on your utilities, you know, right. and many older homes are not insulated. Right. You have plaster, the, you know, the sellers like, you know, yes, insulated, but I don't know what it's insulated with. And I don't know where it's insulated. You know, we actually had a pretty cold winter last winter because we have determined that our house is not fully insulated. So oh, no. that's going <laughs> to, and, and some of them can't like some of them are built like on the brick foundation or whatever. And there's like, you can't insulate it. Like that's right. just what it is, you know? Right. Right. Or the insulation's so, been like crumbled. It's like so old. <laughs> yes, for sure. And, you know, there's nothing worse in my mind. Like, I feel like if you're going to buy historic property and I'm a purist, I admit it, but if you want to come in and replace all the windows and make them new, then it may not be for you. It may not be for you because they you know, they're not going to work perfectly. They go right. up and down, but maybe they stick a little bit, or maybe you need to put a stick under one side to hold it up. <laughs> um, but you know, old windows are still good as long as the wood isn't deteriorated. And there are things you can do to make them more energy efficient. I mean, just for the wavy glass alone, right. I want to keep them. So, you know, it's, it's hard when I see somebody who likes the idea of living in an older home, but then they talk about, you know, taking out certain features that make them what they are. Right. Exactly. No, I totally get it. Well, tell us about, um, cause I found you on Instagram. Tell us about your Instagram page and how people can find you. Sure. Um, you can find me on Instagram at the front door project. And I've been running my account now for quite a few years, even though I've only been in real estate for a couple of years, but I have a big focus on um, beautiful homes, historic homes, homes with great curb appeal. Um, I'm very interested in historic preservation. You are definitely I, destined to be a real estate agent. I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I love working with, I love the homes obviously, but I also really enjoy working with people too. And yeah. I've learned in real estate, it's much more about the people than it is about the actual right. homes themselves. So yeah. 
Exactly. Cool. Well, I really appreciate you being on Dev. Thank you so much. Is Instagram the best way to get a hold of you or do you have another way? You can also text or call me at 860-461-5930. I'm in the uh, Hartford, Connecticut area, and I'd love to help you out. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks. 